May I sit down? You, you mind? My grand sheikh taught me that when, whenever, whenever you smell a rose, you say a salawat, an old, an old tradition. Even if, the, even if the smell is very faint. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. An ancient ways of life, which, which have integrity. Which are founded in, in in revelation, which are which are not merely um, cultural inventions, but which 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 spring out of the, the very depth of, of human experience, maintain maintain their integrity throughout uh, centuries and centuries and millennia of, 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 of human history. So that tonight we're in the presence of of, of such a of a, of a beautiful phenomenon, which is the which is the persistence of the, of, of the ancient Islamic way of life and which was born out of the, uh, the, the, the mysterious intensity of the, of the Arabian desert and the, the mysterious and intense love of a, of a certain man uh, uh, who has come to be known as the Prophet Muhammad upon the peace and, and his companions and his family and Centuries later, we're sitting here, still, still aware of the fragrance of that of that ancient way of life, which has been replicated in every generation, and it's gone. And the modern American life is not much stranger. I mean, it's not it's, it's not too much more different from the life of, of Arabia as as the, or as the as the life in in Constantinople or Baghdad or. Uh, Cairo or any place else where Islam has gone in the, in the planet, and, and there's always Islam has always been able to uh, create its its uh, its holy environment with whatever, with whatever is given. And and if one reads Islamic history carefully, one finds a great deal of not only tolerance. Islam has more than tolerance; it has a kind of rich appreciation for culture wherever where, wherever it meets it. And if it does not. It doesn't, it doesn't destroy the previous cultures, but it, it enlivens them and, and, and lifts them up into, into, into new greatness. So that the interaction with this, with this ancient Islamic way and contemporary and the modern world is uh, something which is going to be extremely fruitful and extremely beautiful. And uh, uh, we, we've, seen, we've seen tonight in the <coughs> very touching readings of the, of the, of the younger people, uh, the, the writings of Jalaluddin Rumi, one among many, many uh, mystic poets of Islam. Poetry seems to be one of the primary modes of, of, uh, of Islamic expression. And, uh, and the reason why is, preci is, is precisely what I want to speak about tonight, is because that the, the, at the basis of, of, of the Islamic um, inspiration lies words, Arabic, the w Arabic words, but they're, they're not they're not considered human words, they're considered divine words. Uh, the, the, the verses, the ayats of the Quran, uh, some, some almost 6,000 of them, were received uh, in, in, a, in a state of high concentration and receptivity by, uh, by, the, by the Holy Prophet upon him be peace. That he did not sit down and make them up, he didn't write them, he, he recited them in, in, under a kind of sacred spiritual pressure sometimes he said that he, when he was receiving one of these verses that he he felt it was like a bell ringing or he could sometimes he he uh, perspired uh, he was in a, he, he was in a, a different state of consciousness an elevated state of consciousness which, which we call the prophetic state of consciousness and he's not alone that that all of the great prophets uh, and all the great spiritual leaders of mankind you know have received that kind, of, that kind of inspiration, those kind of inspirations. So what I what I did was, with the permission of my of my sheikh and my guide and teacher, and with his prayers and blessings, I made a, I made a selection of some of the passages 
from the Arabic Quran, and uh, may, maybe English in, in, a, in a kind of a dignified, what I tried to make a dignified, beautiful English, make it, made a kind of meditation on, on those passages, staying close to the original, staying close to all the, the contents and the ideas of the, in the original. And uh, I'd like to, I've selected three, simply three of them that I'd like to read to you tonight. And uh, after reading, uh, I might, might make one or two comments on, on, on each one. But, but Jalaluddin Rumi, whose poetry we just heard, he, he, would, he, he would consider his poetry to be just touching the hem of the garment of the Quran itself. All, the Quran is the source of all of, uh, of the mystic poetry. The Quran is the source of all of the, for that matter, all of the science and the jurisprudence and, and the, the, the calligraphic arts and everything that, that has enriched Islamic civilization for the 14th centuries. Every, every Muslim is in perfect agreement where all that comes from. It comes from, it comes from Allah through the Quran, through the Arabic verses of the Quran. And they have a kind of alchemical effect on a person's being, so that the, 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 uh, the, 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 the resonance of the Arabic is never, can never be reproduced. So any translation into another language or any meditation such as this is, is merely a mirror reflection of the, of the, of the original, which is, which is the Arabic itself. Uh, which is the resonance of, of many scientists feel that the the entire universe is really resonance. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a it's a series of wavelengths that uh, uh, and 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 therefore certain certain profound changes in our consciousness can come about through this resonance. But tonight we're just going to be considering the meaning. The resonance will be uh, uh, you heard the, the, the beautiful young man who chanted. The Fatiha, that, that was the resonance of Quran. So the first selection uh, is about is a is a, is about how we should look at upon the creation. We're not really living we're living in a divine creation. We're not living in some sort of outer darkness where God is someplace else. In Quran, Allah is, is said to be the light of the heavens and the earth. The everything that makes the, the, the the, the supreme reality, Allah Most High, or any other of the beautiful names by which it's called. Christians use the word God the Father. The Jews, the Jews use the word Yahweh or, or, or Jehovah, and other noble traditions that use other names. That this this reality, this ineffable, inconceivable reality, which is which is God, is what reveals and makes visible everything moment by moment. So that we, we're living inside of, the, of a divine creation. And so that everywhere we look, we are we are encountering the face of the beloved, the countenance of the beloved, not in some sort of visible sense, but uh, spiritually speaking. So this, this is here. This is the Quranic guidance of how to regard the creation. You can shut that door if you want. Or is, there, is, it, is it there yeah, open for the, a reason? People are having problem doing it. There's nobody in the counter there uh -huh. to direct it. Oh, I see. Yeah. If it disturbs you, I'll close it. Okay. So I, I'd ask for, for your, your, your close attention. And it's, it's not going to last, my, my presentation is going to last very short, but, but the, the more crystal clear our concentration is. And if you put that piece of paper down. Yes, I'd, like, I'd like to right there, please. Just just <laughs> so that. Because this, this is really, when we study Quran, it's really a spiritual exercise together. It's really a, an act of worship. It is not, it, it, it would be wrong to call it a lecture or anything like that. When we're studying these meanings, we are, we're lifted into another state of consciousness uh, by them. Uh, so so that, that, that this is what's going to benefit us m much more deeply than, than hearing um, any, uh, any scholar, you know, give a scholarly talk. Yeah, I'll read, the, I'll read the selection first and then maybe make one or two comments. All, all, of, this, uh, all of these words are, are, addressed, are addressed to the secret heart of the... That's okay. <laughs> there are a lot of doctors here, so there may be quite a few beepers going on. Uh, all of these words are addressed to the secret heart of the beloved Prophet Muhammad upon the peace. So that it, it's, we, we, are, we are privy to a very rare... It's as if we're in the heart of the prophet, and we're hearing these words uh, spoken by his by his beloved Lord to into his secret heart. 
and then he and then by the divine permission he made these known to humanity and uh, now all over the globe there are there are one billion muslims who every day are chanting and reading and praying you know, from 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 this this scripture so, so these, these intimate spiritual words sort of whispered into the heart of the of the prophet uh, 14 centuries ago are now have now become a kind of com uh, a common heritage for all for all humanity and lots of people who are not muslims read and enjoy the holy quran and that, and that phenomenon is going to happen more and more that's one of the reasons i wrote this book was for, for non-muslims who 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 might want to enjoy this kind of experience okay my beloved muhammad please teach humanity to observe that whatever lives in this planetary realm spontaneously celebrates the source of life the birds simply by spreading their wings for flight are praising Allah most high who knows intimately the instinctive prayer and praise expressed through the most minute action of every being from Allah alone radiates the great affirmation that is heaven and earth and to Allah alone the source and goal of being is this entire kingdom of being returning home Please instruct humanity to understand as a living parable how through the power of Allah the wind gathers clouds and merges them and how from this union life-giving rain showers forth as an essential blessing for the earth. Contemplate how there emerge from the source of power thunderheads like massive mountains from which fierce storms sweep into the valleys of human life, chastening those whom Allah most wise wishes to chasten, chasten and turning aside from those whom Allah most merciful wishes to protect the dynamic flash of lightning that profoundly startles human vision as well as the harmonious rhythm of day and night both spring from the source of power and contain deep spiritual teaching for those who can read the living parables of Allah most high every creature that flows as water of life from the source of life is a parable spoken by the cosmic Quran that teaches humanity to gaze with eyes of wisdom upon all my creations aquatic creatures, reptiles, four-footed and two-footed creatures. Whatever is willed by the source of being comes spontaneously into being and bears profound meaning. Allah most sublime is the single source of all the fruitful forces that function as this universe. I, I think we achieve together a little bit of uh, in, in, for, for, for moments a kind of vi vision visionary experience of that uh, this is this is this is a this is a meditative state which can be sustained as we're, one's walking around in the world you don't have to close your eyes and be doing special prayers you can be in this state of prayer uh, doing your work or, or being with your family and, and enjoying life in every way so the, the, and it, it's a a God-given form of meditation that, that Allah Most High wanted his human beings, his precious human beings, to see the creation in this way. Uh, one, one or two comments. Uh, whatever is willed by the source of being comes spontaneously into being and bears profound meaning so that uh, there's nothing there's nothing random in this creation there's nothing accidental here there's nothing here that's that's uh that's ultimately ultimately meaningless even the smallest action such as smelling a rose uh it is is bears tremendous meaning and then, and the way and the way that meaning is consecrated in, in in the ancient islamic practice is to is to say a greeting to the prophet muhammad uh, after one, when one smells a rose because this was his favorite flower i mean they're constant tiny acts of, uh, of, of reverence like that which which fill the lives of traditional people and traditional cultures and possibly in modern culture we're in danger of losing a little bit of that art of reverence but uh, that you don't have to do anything specific just gazing with the eyes with these eyes the eyes of the heart on, on the creation as um, as meaningful as bearing infinite meaning that would be enough of a prayer that would be enough of a praise but so many times we think, well, we're, cer we're certain that a few things have meaning in our lives, but more and more we begin to think that uh, it, certain events just are, are meaningless, or they're meaning in something very minor. And we ultimately come to, the, uh, we come to the most absurd point where we begin to think that our lives are meaningless, 
or that we are something minor. Where, whereas every soul for Allah is something extraordinarily precious. And here Allah even says to gaze upon uh, his aquatic creatures, his, his four-legged creatures, his two-legged creatures, also as bearers of profound meaning. But the human being is, the, is called in, in, the, in the Quran the crown of creation. So all of us are bearing a tremendous amount of meaning. And uh, just think that we can sit here like this and talk like this and all understand what, what is being talked about. Uh, the, no matter how noble any other form of animal life might be, or any form of animal life, uh, the, the, the doesn't have the capacity of the human being to, to consider the vastness of meaning. Um, and even, let's say, the cloud, the, the rain-bearing clouds. I mean, how, we may be, when we think of rain, we may look, we may think of you know, television, of uh, newscasts, when, when people say, well, a front is coming through. I mean, we no longer can look upon these things in a sacred manner, which is ultimately, of course they have uh, physical causes, but, but what is the ultimate cause of, all, of, of the rain falling is the divine mercy, because rain is essential to life on the planet, so that, that we have to recover we have to recover this sense of that we're not looking at a, at a mechanical creation that's sort of like composed of atoms and fronts and gravity and all of these kind of material forces. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're looking at a creation which, which, is, which is seamless and which is whole and is, which is uh, infinitely meaningful. I'll try this. The second selection is a... Is that 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 first one is, was a, was a meditation instruction by but from God Himself, indicating how we should walk around and just look at things. And as I said, it's very valuable. We we don't have to be in a church or a mosque to to, to practice that. In fact, that can be in every, in every moment. But this is the, the, this is a continuation of that type of um, instruction. And, and uh, uh, I'll read this this section. My noble messenger, please offer humanity these potent spiritual instructions. My friends, have you thought deeply about your existence? As you prepare the soil for sowing, inquire inwardly whether it is really you who scatter the seeds, or whether they are sown through you by the source of life. If Allah Most High wished to test you, the source of power could reduce fertile soil to dry powder, leaving you to lament now we will plunge into debt and be deprived of every comfort. My friends, have you thought deeply about your existence? If you are refreshed by drinking cool water, inquire inwardly whether you bring it down from the beautiful dark clouds, or whether the source of life showers this essential blessing upon the earth. If Allah Most High wished to chasten you, the source of power could cause bitter rain to fall. Even for the simplest gifts of life, you should feel profound gratitude toward the source of life. As you kindle the cooking fire, inquire inwardly whether you planted the trees and made them grow, or whether the vast forests on this planet are not really nurtured by the source of life alone. Allah Most Merciful sustains every detail of existence, providing firewood and fire as precious gifts for those who dwell in the wilderness, reminding them constantly of the source of love. My friends, chant melodiously and cherish with every breath the majestic name for the ultimate source of the universe, Allah All-Powerful. As surely as the stars will fall from the sky at the end of time, and who can know the awesomeness of this divine promise? Just as surely is my living Quran utterly noble and sublime. This revelation is a mysteriously veiled book of light, descending directly from the source of light, containing words of truth whose secret meanings cannot be touched except with minds and hearts completely purified by Allah Most High. This, there are some qualifications, naturally, for, for understanding um, an, an, an ultimate text of Revelation. And the, the qualifications are a kind of purity of mind and heart, which I feel in every, every single person in this room without exception. It's, a, it's not some sort of rare purity that you have to be you know, some sort of perfect human being in order to, in order to understand this. Uh, 
the human, we, we don't have enough appreciation of our own humanity and the humanity of other people. Uh, there, there is a tremendous amount of purity, sincerity, longing for truth and love for truth in human beings. Uh, uh, even the human beings who are in trouble in their lives, who may be addicted, who may be um, uh, emotionally uh, disturbed, who, who may be uh, terribly selfish, or all, all these qualities, that, that things that we all have struggled with. Uh, even in, even in the, under those circumstances, if you're able to see, you can see there's a sort of core, core of purity in the human being. So, uh, with that, with that, uh, with that purity, we, we approach the text, and the Quran is filled with questions like this. You know, isn't it, isn't it strange that here God is asking you a question or asking us a question instead of revealing something, saying it's this way? Uh, instead, there's a question: Have you really thought about the meaning of your existence? And this is right in the Quran. This is, this is not sort of my uh, uh, sort of modern Western uh, way of putting it. This question is right in the Quran. My friends, have you thought deeply about your existence as you prepare the soil for sowing? See, uh, not all of us are working with the soil anymore, but that, that's all right. Uh, uh, whatever we're preparing, whatever that, whatever that we want to be fruitful, that, that we want to, uh, that, that, will, that, will, that will bring our, our sustenance and the sustenance of our family, you know, with that we should inquire inwardly, you know, what is it that's really preparing? What is really that, that's operating here? Are you, are you the ones who scatter the seeds or, or are they sown through you by the source of life? Uh, there, there are a couple of references here that fertile soil could turn to dry powder or that a bitter rain could fall. Well, one, one sees those things happening, uh, the two, you know, that, that uh, uh, the, we, we can't assume we, we can't assume that we are in charge of the creation. But even with all of our technology, with everything that we have, even though that's God-given, uh, actually technology is, is part of, is something that, that a God-given human intelligence has been able to create. But the, the, the point is that every, we should be feel a profound gratitude even with the simplest gifts of life. And we, we all know this, we've heard this teaching again and again, but have we thought deeply about it? Have we thought deeply about the meaning of our existence? My Sheikh used to say to me, if someone gives you a hat, this is, this is the hat of our order. It's a very, it's a simple piece of cloth, but it's a very precious hat. It, it has, uh, it has beautiful symbolism to it. And the, uh, there, there are four, there are four lines here which stand for the four very noble uh, messengers of, of God: uh, Moses, Jesus, Abraham, and Muhammad. And on top is the, is the, is the um, ge geometric. Uh, Nation of Islam. To put a hat like this on one's head, it's like it's like wearing a, a, a most noble crown. So, uh, my Sheikh would say, "Are you are you grateful for the hat, or are you, are you also grateful? Can't you be? Aren't you grateful for the head that you have to put the hat on?" So sometimes the, the most simple gift, the most treasure, is our, our our own being. We're thinking too much of external, even beautiful things like crowns or, or uh, 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 awards and titles that might be conferred upon us. But what about the being that we have moment, moment by moment from, from God? So that, so that this is the second meditation I want to share with you. So the first one is we, we, we go around looking at the creation as a divine creation and, and, and see the, the divine forces in it. The second meditation is to look, at a, look upon our own existence, to, to penetrate deeply into our own existence and to see our own existence as, uh, uh, as a, a channel of divine blessing. And then the third, the third sele selection is, a, is on divine light. This is, you might say that the first meditation is, is, an, is a meditation of eyes open, gazing around the universe. The second meditation is a kind of introspection, looking into the, looking into the nature of our own existence. Uh, the third meditation is a mystical meditation on the divine light itself. So that uh, one, one is no longer looking at, at, the, at, uh, at the meaning of the, of the creation or the meaning of our own existence. One is looking directly at divine, divine meaning itself, which, which appears in the form of light. And this is, 
uh, this kind of meditation cannot be done just walking around uh, as the other ones can be done. This, this kind of meditation involves, uh, can be done at the, only really effectively only at the time of prayer or recollectedness or, 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 or remembrance, when this one is with others praying or, or alone. Now I'll, I'll read it first and then make one of the comments. Calling itself Allah, the supreme source is the one life illuminating every heavenly and earthly realm. My beloved Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Please transmit this profound meditation. The light of Allah is the window that opens beyond all creation. On the sill of this shining window rests the precious lamp of the human soul, whose flame is pure and steady, protected by the transparent crystal of a heart that glistens delicately like a star with the soul's light. This lamp, ignited by divine love alone, burns aromatic oil from the tree of life, that transcendent tree found nowhere on earth, neither in the east nor in the west. This fragrant oil of wisdom radiates illumination spontaneously, not needing to be touched by any earthly fire. Thus the light of the soul and the source of light from behind it blend, merge, and reappear in the mystery of eternal companionship. It is as the light of Allah within the light of Allah. Speaking thus to humanity through the most subtle figures of language, the source of wisdom guides to enlightenment whomever it wills, for Allah is the one encompassing awareness. So that I would urge all of us to pursue this third kind of meditation as well, which is a meditation on the divine mind. And the, uh, you'll notice that the, the human soul is also light. It's like, it's like a lamp. The, the divine light is like a window that opens beyond all creation. So there's no, there are no universes. There, there, there are no, there's no heavens, there's no angels, it's beyond all creation, into the divine essence, into this pure, pure, sheer radiance. And I'm not talking about a physical radiance, obviously, but something that we can see with the eyes of our hearts, so we should probably, as I'm speaking, please attempt to be gazing at that radiance that I'm talking about. And just like if, if I was talking about the planet, I would have a map of the planet behind me, and you'd be looking at, and you could see the different continents in Europe and Africa and Asia. So instead, I'm talking about the divine light. So, so not with your physical eyes, which simply see this room, but with the eyes of the heart, look into the divine light. So this, this light is a window which opens beyond all creation. And on the sill of this window, of the shining window, rests the precious lamp of the human soul, like, like an oil lamp, so, uh, wh whose flame is pure and steady protected by the transparent crystal of the heart. So within your heart this moment, not your physical heart, that the physical heart is the direction of the, of the spiritual heart, but within the spiritual heart, see that pure, steady flame, that pure, steady light, uh, which, which, is our, which is our soul. The lamp, this lamp is ignited by divine love alone and it burns aromatic oil from the, from the tree of life. So that uh, this is sheer life, this life, that we're looking at now. And remember that you're, you're, you, it, it's, on the, it's on the sill of this window and behind it is just this vast expanse of divine light. So you're looking at a, at a tiny light uh, against the background of an infinite light. This, the fragrant oil of wisdom uh, radiates illumination spontaneously, not needing, needing to be touched by any earthly fire. So wisdom is what we're talking about now. It takes wisdom to see this way. I mean, all three passages took wisdom, but, this, but different kinds of wisdom. This takes the transcendent wisdom that can, that can, that can gaze into the divine light. And it, it's a kind of fragrance. The, the oil is fragrant. So this wisdom, if we, if we, we, could, we can maybe smell, as it were, of, like the fragrance of rose, or some, some of the fragrance of, of musk, or some uh, the fragrance of myrrh in our being. It's not a physical fragrance, it's a spiritual fragrance. Um, and it's, it's, it's ignited by divine love. So that, that uh, all those three elements, are all those elements involved, wisdom and love, are, in, are involved together in this. 
the light of the, the light of the soul and the source of life behind it, light of light behind it, blend, merge. Now, now at this point in the meditation, this, your, your own individual soul, like this uh, flame of light, is blending and merging into this infinite light. You see that they're just one light. It, it disappears. But then again, it blends, merges, and reappears in the mystery of eternal companionship as the light of Allah within the light of Allah, so that the soul has an eternal companionship with its Lord. But nonetheless, it is simply the divine light within the divine light. Um, the, for 14 centuries, the mystics of Islam have meditated on this passage from the Quran, and it's been a tremendous source of guidance to them. And uh, many, many profound texts have, have been written on this subject. And this is just a brief, a brief commentary on it. So that let's consider these three levels of, of, of spiritual practice. One, walking around with looking at the universe as a universe. The second, gazing into the meaning of our own existence, looking deeply at the things we do and realizing that it's the, that it's the divine power that's doing these things through us. And the third level, which is in a way uh, the most inward level, is this meditation on divine light. But, but the, the Quran never says to stay at that, in that level. No, don't go into a cave or retire from the world and just be gazing at the divine light all the time. Come forth and, and, and go through the cycle again with that, with, that, with that greater intensity of vision. Then again look at the creation as a divine creation. Again uh, look at your own existence and consider it deeply, its meaning. And then again at the time of, at the time of prayer, at the time of, of the, the of deepest concentration, once again gaze at the divine light. And, and this, these, these, uh, the cycle goes day in and day out week in and week out and that's what makes a sacred human existence and all the noble traditions have these teachings this is not something exclusive to, to islam islam is very has a very fresh and vivid and a good, fresh and vivid manner uh, and uh, but there's no exclusivity there's no, there's no saying that well this is a higher teaching than the other traditions have in, in the quran itself we say we make no distinction in essence between any of the noble messengers of god that they all came, brought exactly the same essential teaching and the same essential blessing for humanity. But it, it's, it's our responsibility, I think, I'm sure all of you feel it or you wouldn't be here, to, 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 live, uh, to live a poem. You know, not, to, not just to write poems down on, on, on pages, but to live a poem, to live human life as sheer poetry. And I think these three, uh, these three forms of meditation, which are which are the word of God, they're, they're, they're not a, like a human invention, will be very helpful, hopefully for us. <laughs>